wonderful. Alright, this looks like a good spot. So, got a beautiful gum tree there and those cliffs. I think this will be great. I've got a bigger canvas this time, if I can reach over, let's have a look. I've got a longer canvas, so I can paint a decent size one. I've already got paint from this morning's painting. All right, well this is a great location, isn't it? We've got the uh, beautiful gum trees, the fantastic weather for it, the cliffs, the water, everything. I've just blocked in a few lines to get me started. Now I'll get into it. All right. A bit more of the dark. Let's go for the alizarin crimson. Hang on, Viridian green. I had a Viridian green. Let's get a bit of that. A bit more Viridian green. Gonna knock in a few of the darkest darks. Burnt sienna, cobalt blue. There's a few here and there. Can't believe how beautiful the weather is today. All right. A few little darks on the other side. I might get that sky in now, I reckon. So, clean up some of this area from here now. I'll go to the cobalt, cobalt blue, some white. We've got there. It's fairly dark. It's pretty high up, so it's going to be a fairly dark tonal value. Somewhere along those lines. Just going to introduce a little bit of the red colour. A bit of the ultramarine. There's a few mallies on the other side kicking around, so I can't forget them. Just go up a layer, so I'll go a little bit more blue, a bit more magenta, a little bit more red in it. I'm using magenta for that. A little bit darker tonal value as I get a bit higher. I just want it to be super dark to contrast the cliffs. Right now we'll go for the biggest difference. I reckon I'll put some of the cliff in. So that's going to be yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and white to lighten the value up. I've got a few oranges there from the last painting on the canvas there. I might just leave them. See so how we go. It's not too bad.
go for the burnt sienna. Darken some of the values along here. Just knock in some of these uh, trees on the other side. There's a few trees banging around on the other side there, so we'll go for the burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Lighten that off a bit, let's have a look. A bit more white, actually, a bit more of that sky blue from earlier, throw that in. Just have a look. A bit there. There. A little bit can go in here, I reckon. Get a stick of reflection in while I'm at it. Right, back to this yellow ochre. Burns sienna and white. reflection coming down a little bit there we got here something in here just come right in close and check out these cliffs in this angle you get better lighting I reckon instead of looking into the light you got the light behind you that makes the colors look stronger Going with the current now, so it's taking almost zero effort to move along. Got a bit of a green and magenta, just trying to knock back, get a shadow colour. Put some stuff on the other side, the trees on the other side. A little bit more green in that. Yellow ochre today, I've even. Each day is different, so you just never quite know what's going to be. Let's have a look. Put some of those shadows in. Just there and there. There we go. More burnt sienna in that, or in the value. There we go, get that in there. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, green. There's a few reeds kicking around here, so I'm going to stick them in. I can go in there. Like so. All right, magenta, cobalt blue. It's knocking a few of these dark shadows of the trunks in here and up the side. Like that. Random. out the side of his tree a little. The shadow version. I can go there and there. 
alizarin crimson. There's some fairly red brown sort of colours in the in the trunks. So we'll just put them in. Like so. There we go like that. The Australian Impressionist Tom Roberts from the 1800s once said, art should be the perfect expression of one time and one place. Then it becomes art for all times and all places. Couldn't agree more. Tom Roberts. The father of Australian Impressionism. Yellow ochre and white. Fill this area in. Aha, uh -huh. someone's drifting past. I can go in there, soften that. Pull that up to soften it. We got here a little bit more greens. Some of the reeds on the other side. Look at that. It's kind of working. Burnt sienna. Just painting the shadow on the other side here too. Shadows on the cliff. There's always so much to do on a big painting like this. Right, yellow oak's not that big, but big enough, you know what I'm saying. Yellow oak, viridian green. Knocking a bit of foreground grass. That. That. Now some white burnt sienna, magenta, just getting a light value here. A bit more burnt sienna, make it more of an earthy tone. I'm painting some of the earth here in the foreground. Just getting a bit more paint. The linen is pretty much the same colour, but I want to get a bit of paint build up as well, so adding a bit more to it. There you go, look at that. Chunky, chunky. Right, darker value, what are we doing? Burnt Sienna. Yellow ochre. Knife on edge. Just getting the underside, the shadow side of that tree trunk. All sorts of shadows going on there. Now I'll go for, change tax, go for some cobalt blue, blue and crimson. Quite a cool value. Knocking these shadows here. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green. A 
very lightly drag the knife, painting the shadow version of some of these bits of leaves and whatever up here. You can go in there. Now I change tack and go for the high key version, so I might use a bit of yellow and yellow ochre. Pretty and green again, but this is going to be a much lighter value, so it's got a bit of white as well to lighten her up. Just very lightly touching so those shadows are also showing through. Okay, now on top of the uh, bank over here, there's some mallies as well kicking around. They're quite bright up on the hill there against that blue sky. Got a lot of tonal value than that, so a bit more white and a bit more orange. I can just be up there, there's a few over here kicking around. Something along those lines. Some of this lighter tone, they can go in here. Which would also go in the water down here. Pretty and green. Yellow yeah, like a burnt sienna. A bit more brown and white, just trying to get some of the reflection of the trees back into the water themselves. Let's have a look. Well, the cliff colour here, reflecting that cliff, obviously. Now, pull through and soften. Pull through and really soften those cliffs. Like so. Let's get the knife clean and pull through. Super soft, super soft. There, yeah, there we go. Nice and soft. Pull that down, get those, some of these reeds softened up as well. I'm just doing a lot at once here. Now, what do we got? All right, now we just mix up some white, a bit of yellow, get a high key color. White and yellow is very high key. Oh, there's a boat in the scene. Very lightly dance this on now. There we go. A bit here and a bit there where the light's catching. There's one up here. Some there, it's just dancing all around really, so we just put it in different places where it's catching. Ok, 
Okay, some more yellow ochre. High key colour. I'm going to mix up some more of that. There's some boats in the shot. People cruising through. Alright, so burnt sienna, yellow ochre and white. Just going to clean the edge of this tree up. Like that. Paint some of the negative spaces in there. Yep, yep. Pull through and soften. There we go, that goes up there. Let's have a look at that. Shadows. Different lines here and there. Wipe it clean. Soft, super soft for that stuff. The reflections. Wipe it clean. Pull through. Soften. Sienna here, where are we? Burnt Sienna, yellow ochre. Some beautiful soft light under these cliffs here. Palette knife mark on edge. Where have we got to get a bit more yellow ochre with that? Man, we'll just stand back and make sure we're filming. That's good, we're still filming, that's what we want. Knife on edge. out some of that stuff. Want the clean, go like so, pull down. That's it, that's looking good. Clean that up. Right, magenta, going for some slightly darker tones here. I just want to knock in a few key down things here in the foreground. Lots of activity here, so we use a variety of marks. Is that out good? Green, brown, burnt sienna and green. Go darker than that. Getting the full sunlight. The full sunlight. There. Just moving things around. There's a lot of busyness, like I was saying in the foreground, falling down. Oh, tra there's a lot of roots on the ground. Just bits of debris and whatever else. So just putting that in.
we're all right, look at that. Beautiful cliffs. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Well, there's a lot of a big picture coming now, which is great. Pretty happy about that, as you can imagine. But at the same time, I just want to keep on keeping on and just putting a few more bits here and there to refine it. Little dancing bits of light here and there. Like so. The knife on edge. Gonna change tack a little bit, go for some of the magentas and whites and blues, just make a bit of grey colours. The knife on edge, picking out some of that stuff. And go in there. Right, now just clean up some edges here by pulling the paint up and wiping to improve the draftsmanship. Let me just have a look at this. Well, that was extremely quick and just slap, 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 just going for the, the major colours, the light, the tonal values, the light and the form, just picking them out and moving as quick as I could without over-suggesting anything, not putting detail in, just keep moving around, keep moving around until I feel like I've got everything where I want it. And because I'm doing that, which is painting in the order of visual importance, so it means the most obvious things you put in first rather than putting all the details. Then, once you've got them right, and being on site, it's a lot easier to judge what is right. Then, what you can do is just put a few refining marks. And I haven't put a lot because this is a very broad painting, but what I'm liking about it, it's really giving the illusion of realism, even though it's just very wild, broad paint. Anyway, in saying all that, let's just get that camera off now, come in and have a close look so you can check out what I'm saying. All right, thank you.